Hello Sioux Falls and welcome to this edition of Planning Preview. Uh, the items we'll be discussing here today will be coming into our September 6th meeting. Uh, my name is Kurt Johnson. I'm the current chairman of the City of Sioux Falls Planning Commission and with me is Jeff Schmidt of Planning Staff. Hello, how are you? Great. How are you doing, Jeff? Good. Good. Excellent. Uh, Jeff, lately in our meetings out in the community there's been a lot of discussion around growth and I'm just curious how that kind of growth is impacting the city and school boundaries and different different elements like that. Yeah, and it really has, I guess, started to impact the school districts. You know, the city of Sioux Falls is in seven different school districts, or, or there's seven different school districts wow. in the city of Sioux Falls. So I think, you know, some people understand that, but it's really news to a lot of other people. Sure. And it's recently been announced by the Sioux Falls School District that over the next 12 months, they're going to do a master plan to look at how the growth of Sioux Falls is impacting them and what they need to do. Um, so a couple things that I thought were really pretty interesting. They put in their news release or when they discussed it that if today's elementary school kids that are in a Sioux Falls district started high school, the three buildings we have would not have enough room. Wow. So, and we just really haven't talked about that before. Everybody. Uh, coffee brings it up. Do we need that fourth high school? Do you need, well, now the Sioux Falls School District saying there is really a need to talk about it. From our standpoint in planning, we talk to the commissioners about this all the time because it's in our comprehensive plan. Right. We have elementary schools planned for every mile and a half. Every mile and a half neighborhood needs to have an elementary school so it serves that geographic area not high schools per se or middle schools but we really look at elementary schools and so for the viewing audience and people at home that elementary school and wherever your kids go they they generally have 20 acres of land it's a 10 acre school site and a 10 acre park site it's 20 sure. acres and they have four sections of school that's what we typically plan for. That's four first graders, four second grade classes, four third, so four sections is what we plan for. Each one of those elementary schools has between 650 and 700 kids in them. So when we go out and plan, we go, how many uh, houses are gonna be built, how many kids are gonna be in these neighborhoods, then we need another school. And when I was looking forward into the numbers, we already are planning ahead for 34,000 more housing units. We have a plan for 11,000 more students coming into the city of Sioux Falls. And so we need 10 more elementary schools in the wow. city of Sioux Falls. So right there, you start getting the information out to the public or the school districts and they go, we probably should do some master planning. The growth really does impact them. That's incredible. Yeah. 10. Well, it really is. And again, I, we got a lot of stuff to talk about today, and a lot of this is growth and development, but that's 10 elementary schools in Sioux Falls. Think about West River or North South Dakota. You know, these, there's these other communities that have one elementary school, or maybe, maybe they'll have two. We're going to need 10, 10 more elementary schools on top of what we have already. Testament to growth and yeah. master planning, like you say. It's pretty Let's amazing. Grow smartly yeah. excellent well there's an item here I noticed a couple portions of the of the same item we haven't seen for a while but right. a tax increment finance district we're talking about a project plan and a project boundary for the same so why don't you yes. tell us a little more about that um, and it, maybe I didn't even think about this till now Kurt so it, it is a good segue um, tax increment financing is a property has a current value on it and it's really a low price point, a real t low tax. And so someone comes into city council, but they have to go to planning commission first, and they say, sure. we want to hold the taxes on this property right now at zero or about $100,000. And for the increment, we want to take that incremental value and use it to improve the property instead of taking that value and sending it back to whoever's supposed to get the value. It's sure. generally the school districts and the county gets those property taxes. But if we didn't make an improvement to the property, the value would still be of that property, zero or $100,000 or a million. So let us do a big improvement on it. 
and there's going to be this big increment that we're going to make back in the property. And then again, in 10 years or 20 years, all of a sudden, somebody else is going to, the school district and the county is going to get a big boost. So that's the hope. And this one, this project plan and this boundary, um, it's on third and second and third in Phillips and Main downtown. They want Correct, to build yep. a, a big office retail. Majorly, it's going to be apartment complex along Phillips Avenue. So yeah, so we could definitely see a big boost and compared to what that land is right is now. right now. Yeah, yep. exactly. So great, great project. Um, Next item here, we're talking about a rezone from a conservation district to commercial institutional campus, South Louise and West 69th. I guess we can guess what that one is. Yeah. Uh, Avira owns this land at Louise and 69th Street. And we have, and I'm sure, Kurt, I don't think we've counted these yet. We have a, a significant amount of rezonings this month. Um, <laughs> all of these agenda items, we'll say it now up front, and then Kurt will clarify at the very end. Please give us a call if you have any questions on Planning Commission agenda items because we don't always know if any of these items will actually make it to the agenda, but we like to brief people now so that you can start thinking of them. So all of these rezoning items are applicants coming in saying, we'd like to own, we own this piece of property, we want to rezone it from this to this. So that's what they're requesting to do of the Planning Commissioners and then if we approve it or deny it, then it goes to city council and city council approves it or denies it. So this first one again, um, Avira's been having this on their uh, ideas for quite a while now where they have this CN property and they want to bring it into their campus. Again, I don't know if it will go this month or not or if they're even going to do this project. But CN is a drainage open space area that they're planning not to do conservation now. They want to build um, a building, I think, is what they're going to do on it. So sure. follow up on that one. Exactly. Well, thanks, Jeff. Uh, our next item, we're going to be, there's a, there's a multi, these are always fun to look yes. at. There's a, there's a multitude of use. We got some residential, single family, RD twin home, some apartment residential and office. We're going to be going to a conservation apartment, live work, commercial, North Career Avenue and West Benson Road. Yes, this is Career and Benson. It's already zoned, which is why Kurt had a mouthful there. It's already zoned on the northeast corner of Benson and Career. And what they're doing now is they're updating their plan. They cleared it, boy, 10 years ago. They cleared the property, took down the farm, laid it out. Then the economy changed and went down. And so now they're going, well, now based upon what we think the economy is today, this is how we'd like it to develop. So. Excellent. Yep. It looks like a good good lineup yeah. uh, of, of proper mix. In Correct. Any, Apartments, in commercial, some office. Yeah. Excellent. Our next item, an I-2 heavy industrial district rezone to the recreational district, uh, 1200 block of North Weber. Um, down in North Weber, this is an old stockyards piece of property, so it was heavy industrial. They're rezoning it to rec, recreation, to do the stockyards park down there. Very good. Uh, rezone RT1 single family residential traditional district to the RT2 townhome residential traditional district, 200 block of North Nesmith. This is off 6th on the east side of town, but kind of still in the core. Um, so again, one of the other caveats of the nicety of doing planning preview is everything has the visuals along with it. So you, when you see these pro properties, um, this property would like to build from a single family house or lot to townhome houses and lots and do new construction. Um, in my opinion, again, we have to have the public hearing and see what the adjacent property owners say. It's a great opportunity. I mean, it's along a relatively busier street adjacent to some commercial, but getting new housing stock in these neighborhoods, which is really, a, really an up and coming neighborhood, I think it's just a great idea. Very good, I agree with you there. Um, our next item, a rezone from I-1 Light Industrial to a conservation district for allowed forms north Westport, north of West 54th Street. Uh, the property owner up there um, is the Jans Mick Corporation. They own a lot of that land. They've built warehouse distribution, industrial development up there. 
this parcel needs to have a little bit more detention pond on it. So they're rezoning it from I-1 to what it's going to be built as, which is a conservation detention pond. Excellent. RD1 Twin Home Suburban District to S2 Campus Planned Unit Development, 2300, 2400 block of South Summit. I'm catching myself thinking the same thing and saying the same thing over and over again. So here, they're rezoning it to what they're actually going to do, just like on the previous one I mentioned here. It was zoned for twin homes or duplexes. They're going to rezone it to the S2 institutional campus. It's going into the Augie, Augustana University property, and they're going to build twin homes or fourplexes. So it's still going to be housing, but it's not somebody else's housing. It's Augustana's housing. So student housing. It's student housing. Yeah. Yeah. Very so good. then it makes more sense for people to go, well, what's RD? Well, what's S2? S2 is owned by a campus. Very good. Yep. Uh, rezone from a C3 commercial to an RA1 apartment residential, uh, 2300 block of West 46. This is another one, a perfect example. Um, this is an existing residential apartment, RA, that when we, as the city of Sioux Falls planning staff, changed the ordinances, it's on West 46th Street. We zoned it commercial because it's in a commercial area, but it's not a commercial building, it's an apartment building, so it's being rezoned to what it's appropriately it's built as. Very good. Our next item, these sound familiar, we're rezoning from an ag agricultural district to an RS single family district, uh, North Cactus Drive, south of East Imani Ridge Place, mm -hmm. on the edge of town? Way up on the edge of town, northeast, um, the Cactus Heights area. Uh, coming in on the edge of town, these properties usually come in as ag from the county, so it's been annexed, it's coming in the city of Sioux Falls, and they want to build single family housing units, so that's residential single family RS. Very good. Uh, our next item rezoned from an ag district to an RD2 townhome residential and suburban district and RA1 apartment residential, northwest corner of West 41st Street and South Ellis Road. I'm thinking like I almost planned some of these because now I can get in a flow. So here we <laughs> on the west side of town, on the edge of town, it's going from ag to who? And so this is at 41st and Ellis, the northwest corner, and it was recently annexed and they're gonna build townhomes and apartments on basically on that corner. No, very good. That yep. one's stone throw from a new elementary school. That's or right. Newer elementary yeah. school. Anyway. As we talked about the need for schools in the area. Very good. Uh, next item, Ag to I-1 Light Industrial, to, or excuse me, Ag and I-1 Light Industrial to I-2 Heavy Industrial Districts, uh, southeast corner of East Benson Road and 229. This is in back to the northeast part of the city of Sioux Falls, um, and it's in the industrial development area I mean, as Kirk mentioned, as you said, it's um, east of I-229, north of, ben or by Benson Road, and it's not ag up there, it really isn't farmed, but it is more industrial. Sure. Rezone our next item from a C-4 commercial regional district to an I-1 light industrial, uh, southwest corner of West Maple and North Westport. I'm going to say this has been in the works for a while. This is the old Oaks property. I okay. think that came out right. The, the Oaks property. So the recently vacated Oaks property. There we go. So <laughs> on Westport and Maple, and it's zoned commercial, but it hasn't been used as commercial for quite a while, and it doesn't seem to be wanting to be used for commercial. So someone's saying, I think it's more appropriate to do it as an industrial district. Everything really to the north and to the east is light industrial and so they would like to rezone it and maybe do a warehouse manufacturing i mean a storage building storage building, yeah, yeah. warehousing which Excellent. is what's out there very good our next item a rezone from rt1 single family residential traditional and ra1 apartments to low density c2 commercial and neighborhood streetcar district west 6th and south minnesota it's on the northwest corner of minnesota and 6th and they're rezoning it to commercial, and anybody thinks about, well, what's Minnesota, Minnesota Avenue's commercial? So it seems to be appropriate. This is gonna be used by Minnehaha County campus, the administration, the government, Minnehaha County, for more parking. Um, okay. they, there's a need for more parking in downtown and for the campus, and so it's not really a single family area on that corner, and so they can have a parking lot. Very good. 
Next item, a rezone from an RA1 apartment residential low density and office to a C2 commercial uh, West 4th and North Minnesota Avenue. We were just at 6th and Minnesota. Now we're going to go up the block a little bit to 4th and Minnesota, um, take in an old apartment area, some a couple buildings, clean that up, um, and again go to the C2 office area and do some more non-residential in our terminology development. Yep, right on Minnesota. Right it's good in Minnesota. To, good to have that yeah. type of transition. Very good. Uh, next rezone, RD1 twin home, duplex residential suburban to an RA1 apartment, low density, 2200 block of East 34th, north. That, we had a one earlier on the agenda like this, and same thing. Um, twin homes or apartments. This is a vacant property on East 34th Street. When the city did this rezoning back in 2014, city staff, we looked at it. We thought it was twin homes on a vacant property. There's nothing there. It was really apartments on a vacant property, so we're going to correct this property. Very good. Uh, our next item, a rezone from an office district to I-1 Light Industrial, 4500 block of West 59th Street. West 59th Street. Uh, it's on Louise Avenue and 57th Street, back behind all of that along the interstate of 229 and 29. We call it the Golden Triangle. There's a lot of stuff going on back there. There's some really large office buildings, there's some apartments, there's some commercial. Um, so they're going to rezone from office to light industrial because when you're light industrial you can do shift workers. You can do big office buildings, um, really large buildings and that's what they'd like to do. But at this point they're still making plans. Very good. Uh, our next item, a preliminary subdivision plan, Ulrich Farms Edition, north of West 41st Street and west of South Ellis Road. We have two preliminary plans on this month. Uh, these plans were rezonings earlier on our agenda. Sure. Preliminary plans are, as we always say, previously stated, I mean, they're, they're early on, they're the preliminary part of the planning, they're not the construction drawings, but they're going to come in and tell Planning Commission and City Council how they plan to build this, where the streets are going to go, where the, the sanitary sewer pipes are at, the water pipes, how big they need to be. And so for Orlich Farms, that's at 41st and Ellis. When they put in the twin homes, the town homes, and the apartments, we need to know that. And so they'll lay that one out. And then the next one on the agenda is the Benson and Career development that they laid out originally, like I said, maybe 10 years ago. Now they're going to revise that and lay it out again to meet their new need and development. They always have to meet city standards. This is really our first attempt. attempt for engineers to look at sure. it and go, that's the right pipe size. No, you got to get a different grade on it and we start to get some engineering done. Now that's good to have that up front. Yeah. And again, up front. solidifies it. Yeah. A little, little less surprise later on, Correct. if any. Our next item then, thank you for we jump past that other one, conditional use permit, RE6 form for residential units on the first floor downtown planned unit development, 700 block of North Main and 100 block of West 2nd. In the downtown area, our standard is that if you're going to build a building, it should be office or retail shopping on the main floor. Because again, it's, it's, more, re it's more residential, but excuse me, I really messed that one up. So it's really... Retail. Yeah, on the first it's retail floor, on the first floor, or, it's because yeah. it's pedestrian based. People are walking on these streets, sure. and so as I kind of joke, I'm like, you, you probably don't want your bedroom right there or your bathroom <laughs> on where everybody's walking on Phillips Avenue. Um, so our standard is to not allow residential units on the first floor along Phillips Avenue or Main. But if you have to, if that's what you're going to do you better come to Planning Commission and do a conditional use. And generally they're like, well, it's not really on the main street, it's on a side street or it's on the back. And so that's what this kind of stuff is. They'll show the plans and there's still commercial office on the primary street, but so how do they lay these things out? Yeah, well, you know, market will drive. Yes, we'll see exactly. How, we'll see how it, see how it works for them. You're right, Kurt. <laughs> the market kind of dictates that because again, it, it works out in the end. Well, great. Uh, we have another conditional use, a BCF1 form for an office building without brick siding when adjacent to DD form 6000 South Dorrell. Uh, in second grade English here, a DD form is a single family house. 
So we say if you're going to build an office next to somebody's house, it better look like somebody's house. So we want a pitched roof and we want some brick to it. Sure. We don't want a metal pole building with a flat roof. Well, this one doesn't specifically or exactly look like a, they're doing like a house. Every, yeah, they're doing everything, but they're not doing brick. So we're like, well, we still want to see it. So they're going to bring it in, and then again, we have a public hearing, and planning commission can look at it and go, yeah, it's close enough, right, or appropriate, or, or is means. there anything else you need to change? That's why it's a conditional use, but it's good. Very good. Yeah. Uh, another conditional use permit, off-premise sign, thirty-three hundred North Potsdam. Um, for everybody, off-premise signs are billboards. They're signs that are not on the intended premise of the building. If you own a McDonald's, you can have a sign at McDonald's, but if you're going to advertise for McDonald's along the interstate, you're off. That's off premise. Off, off premise. So here on the interstate, and it's basically Benson Road, is this, they're going to put an off premise sign and advertise whoever they get to lease the site. Sure. Yep. Very good. Uh, Item here, alternative site plan, buffer yard requirements for 1300 South Minnesota Avenue. We've had this on the agenda for a while now, different items. It's at Minnesota and Spring, um, maybe like 22nd, 21st Street, and it's an existing office building that's fixing up and finishing their tenants. It's a medical office um, on the east side of Minnesota Avenue, and as the everything on Minnesota Avenue butts up next to or is adjacent to single family, we have buffer yard requirements. So they're coming in, they're gonna show planning commission how they're gonna do the landscaping standards next to single family. Oh, very good. Well, that was our last item to discuss incrementally, Jeff, this month. <laughs> uh, for this month. But uh, I will say overall, this is by far one of the most diverse mm -hmm. uh, lineup of agenda items we have if all of these make it to the agenda for the actual right. meeting uh, that'll be quite a quite a quite a meeting yes so um, everyone at home we definitely encourage you if you have any questions on any of these items certainly feel free to reach out to planning staff in the interim here before the actual meeting uh, they're always willing to answer any questions on any of these kind of items so uh, we appreciate you guys being there and doing that thank you uh, that's all for us Today, uh, Sioux Falls, we thank you for joining us and have a great day.